As college students, we all depend on professors. Whether it's learning about a new concept or asking about a homework problem, interacting with professors is an everyday part of college life. But what exactly is appropriate when interacting with professors? The East Campus Academic Initiative Committee interviewed professors here at NC State to gain a better understanding of what they consider appropriate professor etiquette. Our first question was, what are some ways to stand out to a professor? Well, certainly the first one is to be on time and attend class because if you are not in class and you're not on time, you stand out, but not in a good way. The student needs to be hardworking. Like for example, if the assignment, uh, or the assignment should be done on time, um, not like don't ask me questions about how to do this uh, two hours before the assignment is given. That's not, that doesn't last a long, good impression. I pay attention to students who look alive and that doesn't mean your body is just in the seat. It means you actually look as if you care, you're awake, um, you're engaged. Often these students sit up front. Um, that's not always the case. You can be engaged when you sit in the back. But we kind of do think that the people who sit up front are really interested because uh, you can't hide if you're in the front row. If you come prepared, then force yourself to ask questions and not just to be heard, but questions that you actually have, right? Most students, if they prepare for a class, would come at some point during a lecture still have questions. So have uh, the confidence and the courage to ask your question. Another thing is do not be afraid of give, to give feedback. So if there is something which you think should be done differently in the class, um, come forward, be polite and give feedback. Then we know that you actually care and you're thinking beyond just what is your responsibility as a student. I remember students who are engaged in the class, who ask questions, who are actively involved with the material, who come to office hours and, and ask me about, not just I had problems with question number two, but I was interested in this material and you know how would I apply that in, in an internship that I might have. So connecting with the professor around the material is always, uh, always a good thing to do. Next, we asked, what are appropriate ways to maintain a relationship with a professor after a class is over? I would just say, you know, if you happen to be close by and the door is open, just knock on the door and say hello, and touch base and catch up. Most every professor is very interested in, after you've taken his or her course, kind of where you're at, all the way through graduation and then when opportunities present themselves you know, after graduation, your career is set. You're paying a lot of money to go to school. And part of what you are purchasing is this networking ability and the relationship. So, you know, go for it. I usually suggest to students, especially freshmen and sophomore students that are early in the curriculum, that they try to identify at least one professor out of all their classes that they may want to establish a connection with as someone who might write a future letter of recommendation. You can always reach out to a professor about advice. So a lot of students have come to me asking me advice about what kind of, they have three different offers from industry and what, what kind of op, job I think they should go for or would be more beneficial in the future. Or sometimes students come to me and they ask me questions about what is my advice about going to graduate school or going to PhD or going to industry, things like that. So you can ask for advice um, in your academic career beyond just the classwork. I think sometimes students assume that faculty members are too busy or don't want to build a relationship with them. And that may be true if you've got a class of 200 in your first year survey courses um, when it's impossible to build a relationship. But I would submit that even then, if you take time, make yourself known to your professor, ask for a little time just to converse, um, you don't even need a reason. Sometimes mm -hmm. students think, oh, I have to have a question about a particular assignment or something that sounds important enough. But no, you can just go in and get to know each other. I like it when students come in and I learn more about their lives. Um, so you should feel entitled to ask to do that. You can tell if a professor seems open or not. And the worst they can say is, you know, I don't really have time for that. But often they will. We then asked the professors to tell us about their preferred email etiquette. 
I love email. I send a lot of emails because it's a very unobtrusive way to get information out to students. And I get a lot of emails. Uh, unfortunately, I get some bad emails. It's a bad email etiquette. So let me share with you a little bit about some things to avoid. Uh, first, you always want to address professors as doctor or professor. You don't want to say, hey, Lisa. Um, now, there's some professors or instructors that might suggest that you use their first name, but until they give you permission to do that, doctor or professor is always appropriate. Have an appropriate subject for the email. Um, I have seen a lot of students, when their email comes in the in inbox, they have not even put the their name in the email. So it shows us as NCSU email address. So I don't know who it is, they don't refer themselves, there is not, not an appropriate subject. Sometimes they also forget to address me. If you want to use email, um, it has to be focused and kind of specific. If you want to talk more open-ended and multiple things, then my sense it's best to go actually talk face-to-face. -face. It's also important not to expect an immediate response. If, if uh, the general rule of thumb is that 24 to 48 business hours is appropriate for um, an email response. If it's an emergency, of course, you can always uh, indicate that uh, a quicker response is needed. Here's a little secret. Faculty members get together and talk about the wacky emails they get from students. We do that. And here's the ones that we talk about, the ones that say, yo, hey, and treat us like we are their text friends and their Facebook buddies. We're not. We like you, but we want you to write to us as if you are writing for a job interview. I'll share with you a few emails that I've, I've received in the past that uh, made me chuckle a little bit um, or made me mad depending on the, uh, the email. Here's one that says, I've missed the past three classes, one to study for a midterm, one because my alarm didn't go off, and one because I was too lazy to get out of bed. I'm not much of a morning person. Can you send me the lecture notes for those three days? No. No, uh, if you wouldn't ask in person, don't put that request in an email. We ask the professors to tell us about some of their academic pet peeves. And that can be a long list, but some of the few things is uh, while I'm talking and I'm lecturing in the class, uh, you're not listening and talking with your friends. That is extremely annoying. If you have a question or if you need a break, just raise your hand and tell me about it instead of just talking. Please don't ask me questions that are loud and clear in the syllabus. Pay attention when I describe what's required for an assignment and don't ask me questions that are literally spelled out in black and white on the assignment description. Um, often it's easier to just ask, but before you ask a question, about assignments or things like that, make sure I haven't already given you something on it. I try and remove the pet peeves, so <laughs> as you know, there's no electronics, because mm -hmm. uh, I think with tax or in most, of, most accounting classes, there's no need for it, and it's, it is distracting, right, if students mm -hmm. are surfing or texting or whatever. So I, I try and remove my biggest pet peeve for mm -hmm. sure. What's my biggest academic pet peeve? People who take shortcuts, um, especially in the um, in the sophomore courses which I teach, the solution manual is, is pretty easily Googleable, and we, we say very clearly, you know, we know that it's out there, but uh, we don't want you to use it uh, because it's important that you actually do the problems yourself, figure out how to do it, get stuck, um, have to ask questions back up, but but figure it out. Finally, we ask the professors if they had any other general words of wisdom or advice. I guess the words of wisdom is just, you know, rest, you know, sometimes just sleep or go walk outside or something. What matters the most is how good of a communicator you are and um, your right attitude. So you could be the smartest person on this earth, but if you do not have the right attitude, you do not know how to communicate with other people, it is not going to take you much further. The grades are hugely important, and right, and, mm -hmm. but we'd be lying if we said they weren't. 
And it's frustrating to students, I think, when we try and talk out of both sides of our mouth like they are when they're not. Mm -hmm. But that said, as important as they are, and they certainly open doors, there's so much more to a person than a grade. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing I will share the last day of class is your best is always good enough. Whatever that is, right? If you can put that out there on the academic plane, mm -hmm. then, you, then we all need to be happy with whatever that is. So build your character. I'm way more concerned about moral courage, ethics, um, the willingness to stand up in the world for what is right than whether somebody has 99.6 instead of 98.2. You know, think less about points and more around your character. Go beyond your expectation. Just because you're given this task, only if you finish just that task, uh, that everybody's expected to do. You, you need to go beyond the expectations, try to actually explore the material, ask more questions, try to actually learn, be serious, be very sincere. And um, I guess respect, but I think that's true for everything. I can tell if you did it the night before. I can tell. You know, plan ahead. Mark your calendar for when things are due and don't do stuff at the last minute. I deserve more respect than that. I will spend my whole weekend going over your papers and writing a lot on it to help guide you. And if I'm going, I don't want to care more than you do. That's it. Faculty do not want to care about you more than you care about yourself. So, you know, respect yourself, proofread, give your best. I think it helps to keep perspective to recognize that uh, while you are getting uh, an outstanding degree from an outstanding university, you're also developing relationships with people that you will hopefully be in contact with for the rest of your life. So it's, it's worth investing time and, and energy in developing those relationships. We hope this information will help you in your future interactions with professors. While professors are here to help, building a relationship with them is ultimately up to you. So the next time you have a question about a class, a job, or maybe even everyday life, Stop by your professor's office hours or send them an email. You might be surprised by their response.